Purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at Purposely.com. Jen, local pastor, author of Help, I'm Saved, and Jesus loving buddy of my friend and yours, Erica. I want to thank her for trusting me with sharing the Bible with you busy people on this amazing podcast. And today, we're going to start a week-long series on the benefits of walking with God. Shout out to my pastor, Sam Spano's recent sermon series for inspiring this week's topic. Walking with God is a privileged invitation for all of us. However, if we're going to walk with someone, I think we better start by trusting them. We trust those who have our best interests at heart. We trust those whom we know love us. Today's topic is the love of God. We're going to learn what it is to need His love, experience His love, and live out His love. We need His love. When filled with God's love, we can do and see and understand things that we could not otherwise do or see or understand. Filled with His love, we can endure pain, squash fear, forgive freely, avoid contention, renew strength, and bless and help others in ways that even surprise us. But more importantly than all of that is we can be saved from a life of separation from our Creator and guaranteed a promise, a promised and sealed eternity with Him. Every time I read that to myself, you guys, I always sing the little song, Signed, sealed, delivered, I'm yours. (laughs) But here we go. 1 John 3, 1 says this, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. Do you hear that? How great is the love that God has lavished on us, that he's poured out on us, that people like you and me with all of our past, with all of our weaknesses could be brought into the family of God and not only brought into the family of God, but hear God say to us the three most wonderful words in any language, I love you. Some of us totally get that love and can wrap our heads around it. Some of us have an understanding of it as believers, but it seems distant and we struggle to accept it. Still, for others, this seems like a lot of fluff as we have been through it in this life and see nothing but our supposed realities. But 1 John 4, 9 through 10 says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice or a propitiation for our sins. Have you ever heard the word propitiation? Propitiation means to satisfy the wrath of God to an offender's benefit of incurred favor as well as escaping of deserved punishment. Jesus is the propitiator and propitiation meaning who he is and what he's done for us is admitted to God that yes, we are guilty and he has taken care of it. He has satisfied God's wrath so we can all be together. The discussion of our guilt is a whole other podcast, podcast but know this. I got to say that again. The discussion of our guilt is a whole other podcast, but know this. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10, there is no one righteous, not even one. None of us can be right with God and go to heaven on our own merits. No person is as righteous as God. Romans 6.23 goes further and says, for the wages or payment of sin is death. But here's the thing, folks. Romans 5.8 says, but God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Few people would take a bullet for someone who loves them. But God died for the person who says, you know what? I know it's right, but I think I'd rather do wrong. Or I know that's wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway. He died for sinners whose sins are willful, deliberate, intentional, calculated, planned. And while sinning, these sinners even enjoyed it. I'm going to do what I want to do, they say, and I don't want anybody telling me any different. Christ died even for those who don't love him back. That's how much God loves us. So if God loves you that much, could you possibly walk with him? There's benefits to your yes. One is a closeness to God. John 14, 23, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus replied, all who love me and do what I say and listen, my father will love them and will come and make our home with each of them. 
When you experience the love of God, suddenly God is not some distant deity, but all of a sudden it's God living in you. A second benefit is we possess his love. Romans 5, 5 says God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. When we know the love of God, suddenly God puts that love in your heart. And we, at that point, have an ability to love that goes beyond the human dimension. Next, we have peace. Romans 5, 1 says, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Finally, and this may be my favorite, fear disappears. First John 4, 17 says, as we live in God, our love grows more perfect, more complete. In other words, when you open your heart to his love through Christ, when you embrace him and he lives inside you, what happens is this, the experience of that love, it starts at that point and then it grows, it develops, it becomes greater. And we go in the words of the apostle Paul from glory to glory to glory. And perfect love casts out all fear. As love grows and is perfected, fear simultaneously diminishes. Isn't that amazing? Wow. The love of God blows my mind. I don't know about you, but I definitely want to walk with him. Join us tomorrow as we take a look at his grace. Thank you for making time for the Bible for Busy People today. If being part of this community is a blessing to you, it's super easy to share this podcast with someone you love. We're all about spreading the hope of Jesus like butter. So if you've got a moment to write a review, boy, we'd really appreciate that. Maybe you need a little prayer today or you're ready to take that next step with God. I invite you to check out our show notes. You're going to find lots of encouragement there. This podcast is one branch on a tree called Purposely, a podcast network designed with practical podcasts to help you find and thrive in God's purpose for your life. If you've got a pulse, you've got a purpose.